Good evening all, Herr President Tatel here. And this is really a video response to the user Immortal Souls who has been posting on a particular video of mine, the title of which is On the War of Evolution versus Creation. Now the reason that that's important is because I wanted to uh, address this user directly. I don't feel the 500 character thing is enough to uh, get me into this. And he posited the theory that uh, the sun is shrinking. So if the sun is shrinking, it means that several hundred thousand years ago, however long it was, that there couldn't have possibly been this earth around at the time because the sun would be too large and would have expanded. Now, I thought, intriguing. I've not heard this argument before because um, every scientist I've ever heard of says that the sun is expanding now and is expanding to the point eventually in the next billion years or so it will consume the earth. So I thought, you have intrigued me. El Presidente Tell will check on this theory and get back to you. Well, I've checked and oh, prepare for this. This theory is put forward on two major websites. The first two you get are answersingenesis.org and the sun is shrinking on the Institute for Creation Research. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Institute for Creation Research. Now, Immortal Souls puts on here that evolution is dead because of this fact. Well, this is a big straw man in my opinion because it's not the argument I was making. The argument I was making was more along the lines of the creationists and the evolutionists will never really get along, um, will never reconcile their views because the evolutionists, as the creationists call them, are so uh, following the lines of science and reason and the creationists will always follow the word of the Bible and will twist anything else to fit that fact that they'll never gel, they'll never get together. And what he puts to us, as all the people who were talking to him about this, is that the um, astronomy has backed up the evidence. Basically, if you look at astronomy, you will see that the sun is shrinking and it has been proved. If by which he means the 1979 study by Eddie and Bournazian, they very cautiously announced this study back in 1979, saying that the sun looked like it was shrinking at six feet an hour. Now, apparently there was a big debate went on. Some people said it was about half that at the time. Um, many other people have looked. Um, Erwin Shapiro then looked at it. He looked at all the data between 1736 and 1973, and there was no statistically different change in the sun's diameter and he reported that in the peer review journal Science. Then they start saying you look at it, um, his transit of mercury data could not definitely rule out a possibility. Well it did. They are applying statistical error margins to all this. But his evidence, all Shapiro so he couldn't detect any shrinkage. Well that is what a scientific experiment is going to say. It couldn't detect the shrinkage because it wasn't there. You know, and then if you want, you can look at other theories. Parkinson, Morrison and Stevenson all looked at the Greenwich data. No detectable shrinkage because they took out the defects. Because if you look at the system, we have only had decent observational equipment for the last barely 150 years, if that. So when you look at the data, the original data could be wildly inaccurate. You have to take the noise out. If you look on the website, good math, bad math, they really go into this interpretation of it. It's based on bad data. All the analyses they've had show a periodicity of about of the sun size of about 80 years. Now you've got 400 years worth of measurements, but only about the last 100 years, maybe even the last 50 years, is any good because it's that that's accurate enough. When you do the analysis, the size of the sun is cyclical. It varies. What you're doing is you're taking a portion on a downward spiral, like on a downward like that, out of a period that goes like that, you're taking the bit that goes like that and saying that that is the whole thing, that it's shrinking. It's bad mathematics. That's what it is. You can't possibly show me. I will put a link to a site that will show you that the mathematics you have used is not a good mathematics because it's taking the downward part of a circular thing and claiming that that is the whole thing. Not true. 
Now, I know what you could come back at me with is the second part of this shrinking sum argument, also covered on Good Math, Bad Math, which is that it's not a shrinking sun, it's, oh, the sun is actually gravitational collapsed. You know, it's nothing to do with the fusion that scientists say it is. And the biggest argument for that is the missing neutrino. The fact that there are neutrinos missing, supposedly. And we know that not to be true. Because we have since found, since that initial study was carried out in 1986, we have now found that there are three types of electron, three flavors as they call them, electronic, muon, and tau. Now, we only knew of electronic back then, so these other two make up for the other numbers. The precise quote put on the web was this. More recently, scientists associated with the subsidy, Sudbury Neutrino Observatory in Canada report the long sought missing neutrinos discussed at the beginning of this chapter have been found. The implications of this development of analysis of estimates for the sun's age and operating mechanism will have to wait analysis by scientists open to the possibility the data points to a young sun. So in other words, you're looking for people who are going to twist the data to fit the biblical interpretation rather than scientific fact. So there's the scientific accuracy of your theory, which is fantastic, I must say. Not really. But then you went on to a little bit of quote mining. You quoted Einstein to us. The quote from Einstein being, however, that everyone who's seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes in convinced that the spirit is manifested in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of man, and one in the face of which we, our modest powers, must feel humble. Don't quote mine Einstein. I'll give you a quote of his, dated 24th March 1954, in a letter. It's available Princeton University Press. It was, of course, a lie what you read about my religious convictions, a lie which is being systematically repeated. I do not believe in a personal God, and I have never denied this, but I've expressed it clearly. In something in for me which can be called religious, it is the unbound admiration for the structure of the world so far as our science can reveal it. Another one. My position concerning God is that of an agnostic. I'm convinced that a vivid consciousness of the primary importance of moral principles for the betterment and noblement of life does not need the idea of a lawgiver, especially a lawgiver who works on the basis of reward and punishment. That was from a letter in 1950, and the final one in a letter of 1952. The idea of a personal God is quite alien to me and seems even naive. But the one he used to me was Colin Patterson, the paleontologist from the British Museum of Natural History who you say says the following. <clears throat> Explanation value of the evolutionary hypothesis of common origin is nil. Evolution not only conveys no knowledge, it seems to convey anti-knowledge. How could I work on evolution 10 years and learn nothing from it? Most of you in this room will have to admit in the last 10 years we've seen the basis of evolution go from fact to faith. Now I believe that that is probably a quote from a lecture he gave that uh, he said at one point used in Australia by Carl Wieland and the Creation Science Foundation, I fully agree with your comments on the lack of direct illustration of evolutionary transitions in my book. I knew If I knew of any fossil or living, I would have certainly included them. I'll lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil for which one might make a watertight argument. Now, if you read his book, Evolution, printed in 1978, the quote is from a personal letter in 1979. His book says the following. The several animal, plant and animal groups, enough fossils are known to bridge the wide gaps between existing types. In mammals, for example, the gaps between horses, asses and zebras and their closest living relatives is filled by an extensive series of fossils dating 60 million years back to a small animal, a hyracotherium, which can only be distinguished by the rhinoceros tapir group by one or two horse-like details of the skull. There are many examples of fossils missing links, such as Archaeopteryx, the Jurassic bird which links birds with dinosaurs, and Ichthyostega, the Devonian amphibian, the lynx land vertebrates, and the extinct chonut fishes. He then says, fossils may tell us many things, but they never disclose whether they are ancestors of anything else. He never said at any point they were not transitional fossils. He said that you can't prove definitively that it is a direct ancestor to a bird or a direct ancestor to a lizard. No fossil can do that. You can never do that with a fossil. All you can show is that there are links. It's not saying they're not transitional. You just can't directly say a chicken is related from Archaeopteryx. And in the letter that the author of this particular webpage wrote to the British Museum of Natural History, Mr. Patterson said, 
I'm sorry to have taken so long to answer your letter. I was away. I seem fated continue to make a fool of myself with creationists. The specific quotes from a letter to Sunderland is accurate as far as it goes. The passage quote continues, a watertight argument. The reason is statements about ancestry and descent aren't applicable in the fossil record. Is Archaeopteryx the ancestor of all birds? Perhaps yes, perhaps no. There is no way of answering that. It is easy enough to make up stories of how one gave form gave rise to another and to find reasons why the stages should be favoured by natural selection. But such stories are not part of science, for there is no way to put them to the test. I think the continuation of that passage shows clearly your interpretation is correct and the creationist false. So there you go, immortal souls. That is my evidence to you as to why not only is your shrinking sun theory inaccurate, but your quote mining is erroneous, it is dishonest, and it also shows a complete lack of consideration for the rational science free thinking position. So when you want to come back and you will come back with me as something that's actually about my argument, then go ahead. This is El Presidente Tell. Love, peace, liberty.